I often find myself these days reminding people that the word Dominican, the name by which we're often known, is a nickname. That is not the name of our order. Uh, it's a nickname based on the name of the man who founded us. But when Dominic founded us, he founded an order of preachers, an order of friars who preach the gospel. And the official name of the order is Order Predicatorum. We are the order of preaching friars. And the reason I want to remind people of that is because, because it, it, it is a, a remarkable task to which we have been invited by the order and a marvelous privilege for us to be able to comment on the word of God for you week after week after week, day after day after day in the midst of the liturgy. It is a wonderful profession and a wonderful gift that we are given this privilege to be preachers. Our readings this weekend and the liturgy this weekend invites us to reflect on that ministry of preaching. Uh, easily, the greatest preacher in the history of our religious tradition has to be the prophet Jonah. Huh? We heard about him in the first reading today. Jonah preached an eight-word sermon, and the entire kingdom, from the king to the livestock, sat in ashes and sackcloth and repented and converted to the God of Israel that they had never even heard of. That's good preaching. <laughs> That's good preaching. I'm sorry, this homily is going to be a little longer than eight words. It already has been. But, but easily, that has to be the best example of what preaching is supposed to do. And we have something to aspire to in the prophet Jonah, right? Okay. So, so the prophet Jonah. But in our gospel today, which is taken from the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, we see how, the, prophet, how the, the evangelist Mark sees preaching as central to the life and ministry of Jesus. So in ordinary time every year, in the winter, and then again after Easter, in the summer and fall, we focus our readings in the Sunday, in the Sunday liturgy on the public ministry of Jesus. So we're still at the beginning of ordinary time, and we have the first mention of Jesus' public ministry in the Gospel of Mark. So Mark is the shortest of the Gospels. He jumps. He doesn't bother with Jesus' background or family or any of the sort of preliminaries that Matthew and Luke deal with, or even John. He jumps right in with urgency in the ministry of Jesus. John the Baptist appeared in the desert at the beginning of the Gospel, and the first 14 verses are about, the gospel, about uh, John the Baptist and baptizing Jesus. But we're told that John the Baptist appeared in the desert preaching a baptism for the repentance of sin. So what did John the Baptist come doing? He came preaching. And the Greek word that's used, that's translated preaching, is the word keruzo kerutsein. That word is, in ancient Greek literature, it's, the, it's what the herald of the king does. So someone who gives public news for the king is the herald, He's the, he, and what he does is kerutsain. So that's what John the Baptist does. He comes preaching. Well, then he baptizes Jesus. Jesus goes off to the desert. We're told he's there for 40 days. He's tempted. That's all we're told in Mark's gospel. We don't get any of the details of the temptation. And then immediately in the 14th verse, John is arrested, and Jesus appears in the desert of Galilee doing what? Kerutso kerutsain, preaching the gospel of God. Preaching the good news. The time of fulfillment is at hand. The, uh, uh, the, king, the time of fulfillment has come. The kingdom is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. And that's what Jesus comes doing. He comes preaching. And for the rest of that chapter, we're going to hear that Jesus, uh, he calls his first disciples. We hear about that. The first four, uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew, Peter, James, and John. So he gets his community got started. And then he goes to the synagogue of Capernaum where he preaches. He casts out a demon. He goes to Peter's house, heals his mother-in-law, which is why Peter denied he knew him three times. <laughs> Bad joke, sorry. I've done that one too many times. Anyway, all right. He heals Peter's mother-in-law. He heals a bunch of other people. That's, this is all the first day of his ministry. So many people are coming. They have heard him preach. They've seen what he does. They're gathering around. And of course, after all that healing, he goes off by himself for a time. And he goes off to pray, and his disciples go looking for him. And they say, Jesus, come on, they're looking for you in town. The Jesus show is a huge success. It's selling out, man. Let's get back to Capernaum. And he says, no. And what does he say about his own ministry at that point? He says, I've got to go to the other towns to preach. 
And then the words that Mark puts in his mouth, for this I came, I came to preach. So in Mark's telling of the story, the very center of Jesus' ministry is the proclamation that God is here. God is doing something new and something different and something wonderful in the lives of his people. And I'm here, Jesus is here, just to show you that, to reveal that to you, what God wishes to do in your life. And so after saying that's the reason he came, then Mark says, then he went to the other towns of Galilee, to all the towns and synagogues, preaching. That same word, keruzo, keruzain. And, and six times it's used, twice of John the Baptist, three times of Jesus. And then it's that fourth time, that sixth time that we really want to focus on in terms of our understanding 2,000 years later of our call to preach. Because the last time that verb is used in the first chapter of Mark, it's used of a leper that Jesus heals. So right after telling his disciples he's got to go preach, he encounters a leper. He heals that leper and tells the leper for the first time of many times in Mark's gospel, don't tell anybody about this. The so-called Mark in secret. Jesus is going to reveal himself gradually to people. He doesn't want other people sort of stealing his thunder. He's going to let, let me announce this, so don't talk about this. And of course, the man goes out and does what? Well, he goes out and talks about it. The English translation says, the Catholic English translation says, he went and publicized the whole affair. But the word that's translated publicized is the exact same word that's applied to Jesus and John the Baptist. He went and preached it. He went and told other people. So our understanding is, is that it's not just Jesus and John the Baptist, but people who've encountered Jesus, people whose lives have been changed by him, people who have had a conversion experience, a healing of Jesus, they also will be preachers of the good news. They will go forth and do the same ministry. In chapter 3 of Mark's Gospel, when Jesus sends the 12, the four we heard called today, and, the, and eight more people he sends them out, he sends them out to do what? To keruzo keruzain, that same word again, to preach the good news. They're sent with the same ministry, the same mandate, the same, uh, the, the same urgency that Jesus himself appears preaching. Now his disciples are sent to preach. And very often when we have the story of the call of Andrew, Peter, James, and John on the shore of the sea, they're called, uh, Jesus says, okay, you've been a fisherman, but now I'm going to make you fishers of men and women. I want you to do something different for me. We often use that as an opportunity to talk about vocations. And if you, you, know, if you think about the priesthood or religious life, come and talk to me or to, to Father. And that's a perfectly good thing to do. But what, can, what we can get caught up in when we talk about it that way is that somehow only priests and religious are called to preach the good news. And that is not what the gospel says. Jesus calling those disciples on the shore of the sea was not calling a professional clergy class. He wasn't saying, I'm going to set aside people that, and they're going to be the only ones who preach. He was calling disciples. And through the rest of his ministry, he equips his disciples to do what he himself does, which is to proclaim the good news. And every person who encounters Jesus for the rest of Mark's gospel, goes out and publicizes it, goes out and preaches it, goes out and tells other people. And that's what you and I as Christian people are called to do and be. We're called to do the preaching of the good news. We're called to to be preachers of the word. We have encountered the Lord. The Lord has blessed us. You are here this morning on Sunday morning because you know here you're going to encounter the Lord. You thought it was your idea to come to Mass this morning. It wasn't. It was the Holy Spirit's idea. You just said yes. And so you came here because you're going to encounter Jesus in these people around you. You're going to encounter Jesus in the Word of God. You're going to encounter Jesus in the sacrament of the altar and in the liturgy itself. You're going to encounter Jesus. And when you've had that encounter with Jesus... It's a great blessing to you, but it's not something that you're supposed to keep to yourself. No blessing that God gives us is merely for ourselves. When God has blessed us, we've had an encounter with the Lord. The Lord expects us to take that blessing and give it away to others, to be for others an encounter with the presence of Christ, to be for others a preaching of the good news. Those of you that are preparing to come into the church, you've experienced some sort of conversion experience. I was in your position 40 years ago. I came into the church 
uh, in, through an RCIA process. And, and, and I had an encounter with the Lord, and I knew that I could not keep that to myself, that I was called to share what God does for me in my conversion with other people. By your lives, by your words, by the choices that you make in your marriages, by the choices that you make in your family, by the way you conduct yourself for your neighbors, by your acts of charity and your acts of justice, by actually speaking about what Jesus has done for you, you are called to be a preaching of the word of God to others. And that cannot be limited to the professional clergy class. It has to be every disciple of Jesus. You come here to encounter the Lord the Lord enriches you and equips you with the Holy Spirit uniquely to be a preaching of the word of God to others. You are the only scriptures that some people will ever encounter. You are the only body of Christ that some people will ever receive. You have received the body of Christ. You have received the word of God. But it's not needed in these walls. It's abundant in these walls. It's needed out there in the world. And the work of the church, the work that Jesus sends his disciples to do is not in the church. At the end of Mark's gospel in, the, in chapter 16, he gathers his disciples to him and he sends them to the whole world to do what? Yes, keruzo keruzain, to preach. So you've been sent to the whole world. At the end of this mass, Father Emmanuel is going to say, the mass has ended, go, get out of here. You've encountered the Lord. Take the Lord out there to other people. They need it. They need, desperately need an encounter with Jesus. And you, my brothers and sisters, are the ones who must take up that mantle, must take up the call, no less than Jonah, no less than John the Baptist, no less than Jesus himself, his disciples, and 2,000 years of Christians, no less than those who have gone before us. We are called to be preachers of the word. So, brothers and sisters, I charge you as a preacher of the gospel. I charge you as your brother in Christ. I charge you as one who has answered the call to, pre to preach. Listen to that call. Accept that call. Be that call. Be the word of God for others that people who desperately need the word of God will experience it in you. Amen.